Today we're going to talk about Theon Illuminate, a new product feature to be released in October that enables users to enrich collaboratively the world with knowledge on demand. What's the prediction around the future of AR Metaverse? Let's listen in. AR to really take off, it has to be social, interactive, precise, and persistent. I agree. So therefore we have introduced uh, cloud anchors and we'll explain shortly what these are, which enables you to share AR experiences between multiple people in the same place. We are using Google Cloud Anchor integration and let me define cloud anchors. In 2018, we launched cloud anchors, enabling multiple users to simultaneously share a single AR experience. So, in essence, the first use case we're going to show is such a shared AR experience between multiple people in the same room. Today, Spatial Meetings allows a single user in the same location to interact with multiple remote users through avatars, like this. So, with a new Eon Illuminate multi user extra experience, multiple users in the same location can interact with multiple remote users through avatars. Let's have a look. So you activate the multi-user XR experience, you click on the Eon Illuminate multi-user button. We're gonna learn about the frog. Uh, so looking at the muscular system, the uh, skeleton that we see here, the cardiovascular system. So they are seeing the same experience, the organs. but from different angles, based on these cloud anchors. Now the next step is to have cloud anchors that are persistent. Now these are permanently there and enrich your world with knowledge on demand. Again, we have worked with Google and integrated persistent cloud anchors. Let's listen in. In 2020, we followed up with persistent cloud anchors which persists for up to one year. With this, we can do things like permanently enrich your space with knowledge on demand, and we are using as a use case language learning. You activate a persistent cloud anchor, click on your illuminate persistent anchor button. That's the anchor button right there. Let's go. Today we're going to learn about flowers in different languages. A flower, sometimes known as a bloom or a blossom. Fleur en français, bloom en svenska. A coffee cup is a container. Café au lait est une chose très spéciale pour la France. Bom dia, vamos beber um pouco cafezinho hoje. Muito obrigado. Grüß Gott, ich möchte einen Kaffee, bitte. Buongiorno, come si dice café? Grazie mille, amore. Café aí está forte. Boa dimensão. The term refrigeration means cooling a space. Refrigerator. A ceramic oven. T, le fond de cuve et les joints. Là, toutes les parties là, jaunes comme ça. Là. On dirait que je suis en cours de dissécation. Oui, à vous, hein, c'est comme. Up a tire, Arcus. D, we're just gonna cut it in half. Boom. Look at that. Bonjour. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous montrer comment ouvrir notre coco sans. Une fois que les deux yeux sont percés. Coconut. 
Just do it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Cours réalisé pour françaisfacile.com. Table de chevet. La fenêtre. La bibliothèque. OK, so what we saw here is that these cloud anchors are there permanently. So when you want to learn language, you can just pull off this application and you will see those anchors popping up with the content. Now, now let's see if we want to go big, like geospatial anchors, uh, where you create AR knowledge experience across the world. Again, Google Geospatial Cloud Anchors are now integrated with E.ON. Let's listen in. We are releasing the first set of AR Core Geospatial APIs, enabling world-scale shared AR experiences that can be authored remotely from your desk. Geospatial anchors are tied to a specific GPS coordinate, so they can be placed anywhere in the world without you having to go there. So they can be placed anywhere in the world without having you to go there. Uh, this means that we get a total new dimension. Deep neural networks identify and describe those parts of the images that are likely to be recognizable over long periods of time. For example, AirCore provides the ability to anchor elements to physical locations and snap them to plane geometry detected by the device. Okay, so our use case here is a giant egg hunt. You permanently enrich your space with knowledge on demand, exploration-based learning across the world. Let's have a look. So first you activate your geospatial anchor. You click on the Eon Illuminate geospatial anchor button. And then you go. The beauty with your Illuminate is that we can put persistent global trackers anywhere in the world. Uh, for example, Anna's gonna place one of them right now where we are here in Indonesia. So Anna, can you place an anchor? The, the anchor will contain uh, information or augmented reality. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Yes, we can see now all the anchor points. Let's dive in. We're gonna start the giant egg hunt out the door. So today we're gonna do a giant egg hunt. They are looking to find in augmented reality where the giant eggs are hidden. And with that is connected to quizzes. And the idea is to learn and earn. Oh, she found it. Okay, congratulations. Okay, so you found the treasure. Now all you have to do is to answer some quizzes about DNA. DNA is the information molecule. It stores instructions for making other large molecules. Let's move on now to Anna, and then there is a quiz. Oh, you got it, okay. Congratulations, Anna. It's a quiz about astronaut. Let's continue, guys. The giant egg hunt is continuing now, but we have moved indoors in the kitchen. Okay, I found it. Yeah, she found it, okay. Now oh, it's behind the coconut. Hi, I am the genie in your bottle. Uh, you have three wishes, but we also have some treasures. I'll present you some quizzes, some challenges, and see how well you fare. Okay, so let's see how Anna is doing. Let's do a sweep. Oh, Anna is there. She's courageous because it's a very high altitude. Okay, now she's looking. Okay, she found it. Receive some very interesting questions about the veins, the arteries, uh, and learn quite a lot about this specific uh, crocodile. Oh, 
Okay, so that's quite exciting. Let's go now to Enterprise. Uh, this is an application that you can use to maintenance repair operation. Uh, and it's in three steps. First, you identify and document issues, then you provide the MRO instructions, and then finally you support the MRO performance. Let's uh, listen in. So you activate the geospatial anchors and you click on E on Illuminate Geospatial Anchor button. Good afternoon. Today we're going to use uh, Eon Illuminate to conduct the maintenance repair operation in three simple steps. Step one, inspect and identify. Step two, repair instructions. And step three, perform the repair. In step one, an inspect technician will identify and document the issues and the equipment in need for repair. In step two, the service manager reviews the issues and remotely provides the correct repair instructions. And finally, in step three, the repair technician performs the repairs following the knowledge portal and avatar-based step-by-step procedures. If needed, remote expert assistance can be provided. So, today we have a number of issues. Uh, there will be a leaking sink, there will be a stove that doesn't work, and finally a refrigerator that doesn't cool properly. Let's get started. Yes, as you can see here, we have a leaking pipe that needs to be fixed. A basin wrench that you can be causing a leak, which means that, you know, there, you might not be able to spot it. So we have here a leak, as you can see, a sink leak that will occur if there's a loose connection or if it's clogged or if it's corroded. Okay. So simply hand tighten the loose connections like this one and this one. For clogs, just place a bucket under, remove the P-trap. This is the P-trap right here. Shake out the clogs. That you can't visually see, you know it's coming from the water supply sides, which are under pressure, right? Take the joints apart, you can add sealant to them or silicone lube. Uh, plumber's grease. Gas oven igniter does not work properly. One cooktop burner that's doing this instead of this, then hopefully this quick video is your fix. Hello. So today we have an issue with the gas oven igniter. I understand that it's not working properly. Now, whether it's uh, grease buildup or food crumbs, one of the most common causes for a gas burner that has trouble igniting is the breeze blocking gas flow to the igniter. The fix is easy. Begin by removing the grate covering the trouble burner. Next, move the burner cap. Soak the sealed burner base in vinegar or warm water. A gas lighter is a device used to ignite a gas stove burner. It is used for gas stoves which do not have automatic ignition systems. Alrighty folks, first you remove the caps and the bases, set them aside. Even with this sandpaper, same thing, just sand it. Hello everybody, Lurks here, welcome to my channel. I'm here to save you time and money. And today, how to easily defrost your freezer. In your freezer compartment. Hello, so today uh, we have a problem here with the freezer. It doesn't cool as good as it should. So we need to use boiling water so to speed up the defrosting process. You can place the boiling water in the fridge. 
and the steam given off will help melt the ice. In refrigerators, defrosting, or thawing, is the removal of frost and ice. How to easily defrost your freezer. Right, let's get cracking. It's boiling point. And then what you do is you fill up one of the food trays with the hot water, then get that first tray in at the bottom. Okay, so that's pretty nifty. Good afternoon. Today we're going to use... Uh, so now, let's look at the future uh, and future predictions. Uh, of this technology. We will reach the integrated era. We will spend more time in the augmented world than we do in the information sparse desert we used to call reality. Many layers of virtual worlds will be firmly anchored and persistent, and people will choose which layer of the world they wish to inhabit. Vast worlds of virtual real estate uh, will be bought and sold, creating a market bigger than that for physical space. I want to make four predictions. Number one, the death of the digital display. Uh, next, I think that advertising will be radically changed by a persistent AR metaverse. Because if you think about it, if you could charge four times more for personalized ads in a physical space, then you only need a quarter of your foot traffic to be using wearables for it to be wiser for you to spend your ad money on AR rather than on displays or print. Because it will be the first time that they can track every impression, even in the physical world. Uh, the AR metaverse is like the advertiser's wet dream. So my third prediction is that virtual real estate in AR and the rendering rights for those spaces will be bought and sold, eventually creating a market that will eclipse that of physical real estate. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, very exciting. 